Ready? What's up, everyone? We're Higher Places. I'm Connor. I'm here with Jose, Angel, and our special guest, Tommy T-Bone Papacello. First off, we want to thank Steve and Booster Ice Arena for having us today. We're here uh, in the restaurant overlooking a hockey game. If you're around in the area, come check it out. They run a great hockey program, awesome arena. Thank you again for having us. I also want to thank our sponsor, LFG Seltzer, the seltzer that fucks. First 8% seltzer that doesn't taste like ass. <laughs> give, them, give them a follow and try their products. They're all over Jersey. They're awesome people. Shout out to Ryan. Shout out to LFG Seltzers. Yeah, first I want to introduce Tommy. Tommy's best known for being his role on uh, the Netflix documentary Untold Crime and Penalties. He is um, the equipment manager of the Danbury Trashers. He was the equipment manager of the Danbury Trashers. This documentary just follows the life of Jimmy Galante and AJ Galante. Jimmy Galante was a mafia associate who bought a professional hockey team for a 17-year-old son. And his son went out and recruited Tommy. Yeah. 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 You know, the, uh, the equipment manager part is just the title. A lot of recruiting, a lot of back, yeah. you know, uh, you know, back alley deals to get players I did. So, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, yeah, we're going to talk all about that, man. Let's, let's bring this shit to the surface. <laughs> so we want to start off from the beginning. We want to know, where are you originally from? Um, originally from the Bronx, the Mars Park section of Bronx. Uh, you know, grew up there, and then uh, I think it was about f uh, 15, we moved up uh, to, to Westchester, and... Uh, you know, did my thing there in Westchester for a while. Yeah. What was the what was the Bronx like during that time? Uh, it was it was you know it was still okay. I think it was more of uh you know the the hard part was um me be having a, a physical handicap that was you know and my brother being openly gay so we you know we fought a lot. Um, uh, you know I've had uh, probably about three or four cosmetic surgeries to fix a lazy eye. And, you know, so between that and my brother, we, uh, you know, we had a lot of tilts. We had a lot of tilts. Guys, it looks good now. You oh, don't, yeah. Yeah, you don't see it at all. Yeah. You guys, it's shades. Like, it's got to be the shades. Yeah, that is, yeah, yeah. So you guys grew up, like, fighting a lot? Yeah, well, you know, he was picked on a lot for being, you know, a little bit more feminine. You know, back then, you know, but, yeah, yeah. You know these days, uh, you know, if you look at somebody wrong, you're going to... Uh, You'll wind up on a uh, a podcast talking about your political career too, <laughs> which I'm sure I'm sure those those questions are coming down the line here. Did you uh, you have any other siblings, or was it just you and your brother? No, I have an older sister and a younger sister, um, and it was uh, it was tough because uh, as soon as we had moved up here, my mother had passed uh, at a very young age, and um, you know so. It was it was quite a, you know between trying to hold the family together and you know pursuing the hockey career playing uh, it was uh, it was definitely tough it was definitely tough yeah what what did your mom pass after you me asking oh uh, yeah uh, breast cancer yeah Sorry she, to hear that. yeah 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 that, you know those were the early days of that before you know yeah again it was, like the nineties uh but late uh, late eighties late eighties oh, early nineties oh. yeah. yeah. Um, what did what did you want to be like growing up? Um, an ex-con, because everybody who <laughs> was not in jail made it out of jail. Everybody looked up to him in the neighborhood. But no, what I you know I really wanted to either follow uh, in my father's footsteps, being an iron worker or playing you know playing professional hockey or working in professional hockey in some kind of uh, you know capacity. Yeah. Uh, I felt that uh, you know it was something I excelled at and something that was there for me during times of sadness, uh, everything from sadness to hunger. Yeah, yeah. Where, where did the name T-Bone come from then? Like, oh, where, shit. Where did that, where did that come out of? <laughs> so, were you always yeah. known as T-Bone? No, no, that didn't come up until, oh, geez, 99, 2000 season, actually. I was in... Uh, I was in Wilkesbury, Scranton. We had just left Pittsburgh. They they transferred a bunch of us down to uh, the uh, the farm team there at a, a a career minor leaguer. Actually, he had some games in the NHL. Dennis Bonvi gave me that nickname, T Bone. It's cool, man. Yeah, he. Uh, What's it mean? It means uh, you know when you come out of the shower and, and, and you see what you're hanging. That's a T Bone steak right there, <laughs> T Bone. So he uh, at this. Nickname stuck, and it's it followed me back here to the to, back to. Listen, it's one of the things we know as. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Why well, wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly exactly so obviously people see this documentary the way you carry yourself and they immediately associate you with like organized crime the Italians and stuff like that did you grow up with those characters how you have experiences with them yeah you know uh, there's there's a lot of characters that I've had in my life and you know did I see a lot of things absolutely and and it's even funnier now because you see the guys that thought they were fuck you know straight up fucking racket guys and they're rats now and they're uh -huh. punks. No, uh, you know, uh it was uh it was a fun time, you know, especially with the you know, with the hockey team there in Danbury, you know, you saw it. Yeah, yeah. Did you um did you get did you have any troubles with like the law growing up and stuff? Were you ever like arrested? Any any uh I'm still uh, yeah, I'm on paper right now. I'm on paper right now. For, for what if you don't let me ask you? Uh yeah, I don't mind talking about it either. Yeah. Um you know, I thought I was all done with all that stuff. And um, my father, God rest his soul, he, it's uh, two years this week that he passed from COVID. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, and my brother-in-law, we, uh, we invested and put uh, our own efforts into a business uh, only to, uh, you know, be f kind of fucked over by some gypsy family. Wow. And uh, I took it to the next level, meaning no matter right, wrong, or different, I'm going to protect my father's honor and his name and his money. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so they, they, I went about it, you know, a certain way that I shouldn't have, you know, um, driving my car into other people's cars and stuff like, Jeez. you know, you're not going to fall, you're not going to fall over, you know, my family at all. So at the same time, uh, you know, I think it was, uh, <laughs> it, it was about four or five times and within two weeks I, I got arrested four or five times, you know, and there was no bail at this time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it wound up being, uh, you know, uh. Uh, three years probation and so. it all stemmed from that situation yeah yeah gotcha. it was uh it was it was really really messed up you are know? you still dealing with that or is it just kind of like uh we're still you know it's still some of the uh, lawsuits are, uh you know um i'm not i don't like to sue and i you know my friends we don't believe in suing yeah but at the same time uh you're dealing with my family's reputation and you know exactly you know uh having a lot of influence in the community and you're going to come into the community and, you know, think you're going to, you know, you know home team, you know, you, fuck, you know, you don't fuck with the home team. Yeah, yeah. You don't fuck with the home team. So after, so, but as far as the, you know, you said you ran your car into them and stuff. So that's already dealt with. You already have to deal with that and stuff. That situation. Yeah. Out of the way. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, like I said, I got a, you know, uh, a few more anger management classes and, <laughs> <laughs> and a few more, uh, you know, therapy session. A little therapy session. But, you know, I tell you what, I, like I said, you know, I thought that was my younger years, but uh, this time around with the law uh, and, you know, because I figured, fuck, you know, therapy and medications come a long year in 20, 30 years. I thought I was good, you know, with yeah. the new medication. But I guess, uh, <laughs> you know, you reach a certain point, you have to realize that, you know, it's your family. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, the funny part is, is that, uh, you know, um, they asked me, you know, what you did, you know, are you regretful? And would you do it again? <laughs> I can't, I, no. I, same answer. It's, it's just, it's my family. It's yeah. my family. And I would fucking die for my family. Oh, as you should, man. I saw the videos of you um, <laughs> slamming kids to the fucking... Uh, the side here, and you had hair there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, yeah. you know, this shit was, you know, because I was wearing hats, it was coming out the back. You know, look yeah. good. <laughs> it looked good in a hat. And a hat That's what hockey players did, man. They no. always had the hats. Oh yeah. yeah. Hockey and lacrosse, they do that a lot. Yeah, you know, um, I felt with the kids, you know, coaching, you know, trying to stay involved with the game, and you know, be and stay close to home. Um, I don't think uh, coaching was my temperament. You know, I could put a team together, which I did in Danbury, and you could see the results that we had there. But as far as coach, you know, coaching those kids uh, at different levels and, and checking through the boards, <laughs> fuck yeah, yeah, you know, it's rough, man. That's rugged. Yeah, it's you know, that's what that and, I, and I've said it many times. You know, it was the you know late eighties, early nineties. You, you know, fucking yeah. cocaine. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Yeah, cocaine's a hell of a drug. I mean, you know, we're not gonna, you know, this, you know, make believe it wasn't going on. Speaking of hockey, I wanted to ask you, um, when did you get into hockey? Um, 
it's actually a funny story to, to get us out of the Bronx. Uh, my uh, my mother had a brother upstate in Binghamton, and she would ship us up there, and, and my uncle ran a rink, and that's how, you know, we ended up going along. You got into it. You you immediately liked it, or was something you had a to... No, no, no. I, I took to it right away, you know, because, you know, people at, at different times had asked me. It was it was a release. Yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. always know how to skate? No, no. Yeah, you know, you had to learn. But uh, but again, it was it was more of a you know a comfort place for me and, and a release. Yeah, yeah. Listen, so on the documentary, it's noted you're, you're noted as a Danbury legend. How the hell did you get that, man? Well, what like, who, like how'd you get that crown? You got to take a survey in the strip clubs around Danbury. <laughs> you know your name over there? Just how uh, your name is on these walls over there, too? Hey, yeah, my name's on here. Yo, isn't that funny? I walked in here tonight, and I haven't been in this building in a good 15, 20 years, and uh, my name was up on the wall for a scoring title in the uh, A Division uh, League uh, for uh, Litos. You know, um, when they opened this rink here, uh, you know, I knew... Uh, how good of a reputation and how well the uh, Santini family ran a rink because they had one out in Long Beach. And, uh, you know, we really uh, took off uh, as far as, uh, you know, friendship and uh, actually working for them a little bit, doing some uh, private lessons uh, for them. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to be sitting here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so move I, a little, yeah, 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 I got move a question. A little bit over, you know, to the documentary now, we'll start talking about that, sure. that a little bit. How did you, uh, when did you meet Jimmy and AJ? Actually, I met him here in this rink. Oh, really? Yeah. AJ was, uh, he was a little, he was about probably seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe a little right around there. And, uh, you know, I was just one after another doing group lessons and, and coaching different little, you know, you know the, the teams. So, and, uh, you know, him and I, we just, uh, you know, we kind of hit it off. I didn't even know who his father was. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had met his mom first, a sweet lady to this day. Um, and then, uh, and then I was introduced to actually, uh, I think it was either Steve or Dave Santini, the owners of this rink, who had introduced me to Jimmy and said, uh, you know, this is AJ's son. And, uh, yeah. you know, we went from there. And next thing you know, um, <laughs> yeah. did you know order. about did you know about Jimmy's uh, reputation and everything? No, but he said he knew about mine. So when did you kind of learn like who he was? When did he learn who I was? When did you when did you learn who, he, like, who the fuck is he? <laughs> He's pretty big. Trash business. Yeah, that's that's the owner of the Danbury Trashes over there. Oh yeah. <laughs> did you know like he was in, in the trash business that he did all yeah. that stuff? Yeah. 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 So were you checking AJ into the boards? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna be my. Oh no, you know what? Actually, AJ, um, his father let him be himself, meaning like he didn't. He protected him to a certain degree. Like, I, I gotta admit, no matter much how, how much I fucking hate Jimmy to this day, he's a great father to his, his son and daughter. And I learned a lot about being a good father from Jimmy, you know, seeing the way he treated and raised AJ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to rewind a little bit, you said you you don't you don't get along with Jimmy, not no. a fan of his. No, anymore? Jimmy and I don't talk. How, was it always like that, or was it? Like oh yeah, yeah. No, it's he, he must have hired and fired me at least thirty times with the, the garbage and hockey business. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a definite George Steinbrenner Billy Martin relationship. <laughs> so, so, so when you got brought on to to you know to be with the Danbury Trash, that wasn't really Jimmy then. That was more AJ. Was, uh, like, it, was, it was more vote, you know, oh, okay. more vote. Yeah. Okay, so so you said you had you worked with um, Jimmy in the trash business before right. you did the the Danbury Trashers. Correct. And you said he fired you. Oh yeah, a couple of times. How how does how does that work? Like he you could just call. <laughs> and why did he fire you? Like he just called you to your office or just like get out of here? You, yeah. you know, you know, it's more like you know, everybody would say because like I taught AJ how to drive. We I used to take him back and forth to this rink. Yeah. During so summertime, with AJ the whole night. Yeah. yeah, and uh, he was 14 years old, and I was having him drive out on the, the interstate to learn how to drive. So, uh, but you know, that wasn't one of the reasons. But again, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, it was definitely uh, two strong will, uh, hard headed, you know, people going at it. You know, Jimmy and I. Yeah. For sure. But uh, we we were able to get past that, and you know, AJ played the. Um, he played the adult in that relationship. You know, he was oh, yeah. always the go-between between between me and his father when you know we were going at it. You know, <laughs> wow, that's, that's just it's 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 interesting that you say that, and it really speaks to your character because not a lot of people would speak up to Jimmy. And what it looked like in the documentary, people would kind of just stay quiet. And and I guess you had that relationship where you were able to like go back and forth with him if you didn't agree with him. Jimmy respected that to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, this last time that we're not talking, I think it was, uh, you know, more my fault being uh, certain things that happened. 
but uh, Jimmy knows that you know, you know, we could go at it, but ten minutes later, you call me, I'm going to be there for you. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's so, all. You know, I I do owe Jimmy a lot, but you know. He, yeah, he's not my happened. favorite person right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> at this moment, so you know, we know you got a lot of experience as a, you know equipment manager, and you know, in and around all a lot of different teams. And it was said in the documentary that you were brought in as equipment manager and really to help you know recruit. Can you you know talk about your role on that team and on that? Sure. It was um, I had gotten a call. I was working at the West Point Military Academy. Don't ask me how I wound up there. You know. <laughs> I actually, that. I saw I saw your resume. I saw you know you were in New Haven. You were at Army. Yeah. I, I don't know how I, I bullshitted my way into that position. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I was in there probably probably well, my fourth year there. And it was like, I guess this was going to be life. You know, it was, it was yeah. clean, simple living, you know. And I yeah. had, you know, got comfortable, I, I got, 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 comfortable yeah. got a little bit of, you know, uh, put a lot of things behind me uh, that I had done in, in the street. And then the phone rang and it was him. And he Jimmy said, uh, where are you? This is, I'm, in, I'm in the locker room in West Point. I I want a team. I said okay. And so it was Jimmy who called you, not AJ. Uh well, he it was on speakerphone. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 And and you know probably uh, you know I didn't even give him two weeks notice. Two days later, I walked out of the gate to West Point. <laughs> to to help an opportunity, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know I went from working at West Point smoking six dollars a cigar, working for Jimmy smoking thirty dollars a cigar. So so win win. No, when, when. So did you? What kind of jobs did you have before you were equipment manager and you started build, building that? Uh, right? After I had stopped playing, I you know I, I bounced around a little bit with uh, with the iron workers uh, and you know doing private lessons here and coaching yeah. and and so forth, uh, you know. But again, you know the street calls. You know that's where the money is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's where the money is. You know, uh, my my role with the trashes was you know whatever needed to be done i did it from scouting running practice ordering equipment you know because if you watch the documentary they're like how can an equipment manager be in the owner's box with a suit on <laughs> you know? so it was just a title you know and uh we just knew that it listen aj and jimmy they think outside the box they've always had and it's been successful for them yeah, yeah. more people got it? yeah i mean it shows in the documentary that you weren't just a equipment manager because they hired you with intentions of you picking out the team helping pick out the team correct and that's what we did you know uh from working in the american league and uh you know different leagues uh got to know a lot of players and what what it was needed to win in that league yeah uh from working yeah, in what the, uh, the USL and yeah, you know, the experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, so. yeah. When you were um, picking out the teams of AJ and Jimmy, where um, what kind of players are you looking for? Like, what did you guys imagine that Danbury Trash to be? Well, you know, that might have been where a little bit of it was because you know, everybody wants their home runs, everybody wants goals, but uh, when you're building a hockey team, you want to build from the goal out, you know, you want to have you know, uh, your meat and potato guys, your scorers, your you know, your fighters, and you know. I, I build a team on, uh, you know, character and effort because I think uh, effort will be talent any night of the week, you know. But uh, it was a great, great team. Um, you know, when you look down the roster, um, I'd say 80, 85% of the guys uh, that I had known in the past or, or, or bought in myself, uh, you know. Nice. Uh, you know, AJ had bought in, you know, Michael Rupp and uh, a few others, you know. Uh, but Gretzky? Uh, he yeah, yeah, he bought in. Yeah, yeah, that was a promotion. Yeah, he bought in Gretzky. He bought in, you know, uh, Sterling. I bought in Burnett, Bialowis, McIsaac. Yeah, Brad Winfield. Yeah, yeah, Winger's my guy. Yeah, yeah. So where where did you find Brad Winfield? Because in the documentary, you just say, "Hey, I he prison jumpsuit." You just slap the. Prison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was in. I was with the team in New Haven, and 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 Winger was playing up in Elmira, and he would just fucking run all over us. We had not one tough guy or a guy with a pair of balls so you know it was just a matter of time before i was like i'll oh, fuck this guy so i was chirping him you know constantly from the bench and you know walking in and out of the arena and uh you know they had to separate us a few times and, they, and everybody you know the commissioner's like listen no this is even before danbury your job is not to fight i says i understand i'm just you know i'm very protective and that's that uh Brussel? Russell. Yeah, Brussel. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a commissioner even before Dan Barry in, in, in that year. And you know, it's just it, it's who I am. I'm loyal to a fault. You know. Yeah. You know. Were, um, were you the one like driving, picking them up, setting them up in Dan Barry? Was that you? Yeah. 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 You we. Yeah. 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 I was. Uh, you know, it was funny because you know, 
uh, in between periods, you had guys, you know, making phone calls. We had one guy who was with Tara Reed. We had another guy who, you know, had, you know, a VIB table at a uh, strip club in Manhattan. I mean, these guys, you know, and the guy smoking darts in the fucking you know, it was just So it was it was more of a, you know, a concierge job, you know, and then, then you know. Were you in the meetings with, uh, yeah, sorry, were you in the meetings with um, Jimmy and AJ when they were giving the contracts out? Yeah, I remember, I remember some of them, you know, because Jimmy, I would say Jimmy, you know, because Jimmy would just put a certain tag on it, and I'm like, yo, we could have got them a lot cheaper, and he was like, you know, don't tell me how to spend my money. <laughs> In the documentary, you guys talk about this salary cap, and I look and did some research, and it says salary cap was 450. You guys ended up paying out 750 thousand dollars but like 750 is of what they know jeez because i because i yeah because he said that they like jimmy was just slapping ten thousand dollars on the tables like here people on payrolls i mean everybody hey, uh, yeah 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 there was yeah that's more how does how do you get investigated for that type of stuff like because like how well, do they even know well you know you want to you know swing your cock around like he did and you're gonna get noticed you know <laughs> uh you know be honest you know well, he did hurt some, a lot of people but you know it is what it is. Were, were there any players that you tried to recruit that didn't like? Uh, yeah, George LaRock, uh, Eric Weinridge, Tony Amante. I've had I had conversations with them, uh, you know, because uh, I, I would, you know, they were practicing. It was a strike year, and they were just renting the ice down at Voorhees. And, you know, me having a relationship with Mackay Zaki was telling me, oh, the guys are coming in at a certain time to skate on the ice to stay in shape. And I was down there with a checkbook just trying. You know, what do you need? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah, just, you know, he would tell me, don't come home without them. You know, he was yeah. like, you know, he, he, that's the way Jimmy yeah, yeah. was. You yeah, know? but they, they were definitely out of the bathroom. Uh, circling back a little bit, you know, he said, <laughs> said I was swinging his cock around a little bit. On the, on the documentary, it shows, you know, the FBI was kind of on them from the very beginning. So, you know, when, when they kind of, you know, when they did, they found their raid and they found what they needed to. How did it feel when, you know, the FBI came and raided everything? Um, yeah, wow, that's a, I've, uh, I've buried my mother, my two best friends, one of my, which was my son's godfather, mm -hmm. and my father, and lost the love of my life, and it, it was the same kind of feeling that day when the FBI came in. Right? Uh, hitting that pit in your stomach, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, it can't just, explain it. you can't explain it, uh, you know, again, um, I, you knew from day one it was going to go bad at one point. But, you know, you know I'm a ride or die guy. So I want to get into um, the documentary. It said that you were, you would mess with the opposing team, you know, just to get that competitive edge. And, and it's the equipment manager job. Yeah, yeah, they said, <laughs> yeah they, said, they, said you would, they said you would give six towels to the entire team. The towels are paper thin. You would cut off hot water. You see... Those things, yeah, they did happen, but you know, a lot of that wasn't like my decision. The, yeah. the, you know, like the shit with the fish that's AJ and I and all this other stuff. Yeah, and the hotel and pulling the fire alarm. That other <laughs> stuff was just, you know, what what was delegated down to other people. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the real reason for the suspension was, um, which I can't believe Netflix didn't put in the documentary. Um, AJ was uh, had come down out of the owner's box and he was uh, congregating with uh, fans behind the visitors' bench, which was Section 14. Okay. Now, Section 14 used to be uh, Section 102. Excuse section me. 102. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Section 14 we'll came out. Section, section 14 came out of New Haven with me. Okay. That those were. I mean, those were all my white trash friends. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, I mean, they were really bad. And then when I when, when I told them that I was coming to you know Danbury and they were having another UHL team, they they, mm -hmm. they came in and they bought all the season tickets behind there. So that was that was pretty much you know my doing. But uh, so AJ was over there with them during a big game with, uh, between Richmond and they, Richmond has a, uh, a GM and I actually he's still a, a, an owner or a GM in the Federal League which plays out of Danbury now some sissy named Jeff Krupp, and everybody knows, and, and I've told everybody at interviews, I tell fucking junkies on the side street, you, you, know, you ever see this guy? Let him know. You know, as soon as I see him, it's on again. But anyway, <laughs> him and, he was giving AJ a hard time, and I was like, you know, that's my bread and butter. I'm not going to let anybody, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. AJ. So I'd come off the bench, 
And, uh, you know, the only thing I remember was, like, I hear an AJ's voice, and, you know, he had me by the, my belt and pulling me off the guy. And the commissioner right. was like, AJ yeah. was young, too, at this time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but you know what? I never looked at AJ like that. I always looked at him like a man. He carried, he's always carried himself. Sure. You know, even though he might have dressed like, you know, he, he was slinging rock, but, you know, he... He definitely handled himself yeah, really well. Yeah, he, even as a player, you know, when I coached him even in high school, he was... He, he, I wasn't dealing with a, a a high school kid. I was dealing with an athlete with AJ because yeah. he, he, that's the way he carried. And again, you have to, you know, look at Jimmy because that's the way Jimmy had raised him. Yeah. And again, if uh, people people could say what they want about me or say what they... But I'm a great father and everybody will say that. And I've learned a lot of that from Jimmy, you know? Yeah. I mean, even though, again, yeah. Jimmy is, uh, you know. No, no, for sure, for sure. So, circling back, um, how long were you suspended for? It never said how long you were suspended for. Um, Pretty much, you know, he, they, he could suspend me from the bench. He couldn't suspend me from the arena or being, because, you know, listen. He's got to start his car in the morning, so you know he's he's not gonna, he's not going to push the issue with me. No, he knew. Because that's what it was. He wasn't dealing with regular guys with Jimmy and AJ, sure. or even the guys that were around Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. Or me, you know, yeah. Jimmy liked me because I was always in trouble, and Jimmy loved trouble. You know. <laughs> no, no, yeah. You know? Yeah, no, he wasn't dealing, like, even the mascot. The mascot was, like, a, 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 an associate. Yeah, this <laughs> fucking guy. I, I, you know, I, when I saw him get into that outfit, I said, you, you, yo, you're losing your man call. You know? <laughs> <laughs> fucking losing that shit. You're putting that stuff on with those tights. Get your balls all tucked up in your ass. <laughs> and that fucking thing. Yeah, did, did, hey, did, yeah, did you know? Jimmy tell him to do that? Or he kind of, like, just... I, listen, I, I wasn't... Don't tell me he volunteered. I, 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 <laughs> don't tell me he wanted to. I, it was, it, you know... It was like the first time I saw my brother in a dress. It just fucking didn't, <laughs> just didn't fucking go right. You know what I mean? <laughs> this shit just wasn't right. Talk, uh, talking back about Section 102. So they were like infamous in the documentary. Yeah, they are known. What are some stories, some crazy stories about Section 102 that did happened? Did you them on? I know you did. Uh, I know <laughs> you did. I know you were in there. I, I played the Jedi mind trick on the motherfuckers <laughs> constantly. Constantly was Jedi mind trick in there. But they were, you know, the, the good old fucking white trash. You know it. Yeah, I love it. Just, you know, and, and loyal, and Jimmy treated them good. Listen, in New Haven, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have been able to finish out the last season there because the owner had, you know, packed everything up and left, and the, and the fan club and, and the people from Section 14, which became 102, financially supported the team. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, so they were Section 14 because they were at a different. They were Arena, we were up in New Haven at the time. Okay. And then when we came down, I mean, our, our press conference when we announced the team, there was like maybe eight of them, and they said, T Bone, this is where we want to sit. And it was right behind the visitors. Bench. <laughs> and and Jimmy's, like, Jimmy's like, where the fuck did you get these people? You because know, this is even before the first game. And they're all coming in, you know, and, and you know. Rip concert t shirts, you know, yeah, they got not a fucking full set of teeth between them, but they, you know, they spend money. This is what they are, dude. That was their fucking life, dude. I remember seeing they had trash, uh, trash and tattoos. tattoos, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big fan. Uh, that, that, that dude would have kept it going by himself if he could. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of yo, he was so he's still loyal, you know, yeah, Those, it has to be, it's on his body, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Listen, it's, and I think it's great that people are able to take to something and enjoy something so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, when uh, a lot of the guys that in that weren't mentioned in the documentary went to went to college, um, it really hurt a lot of people. A lot of people got hurt. A lot, meaning uh, a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people lost their careers because of things that certain people said and did uh there was a uh we there was a few front office rats and actually we had a uh you know uh, i know everybody gets mad when i say it but we had a rat that was on the team oh uh, i you know, know. Was that was that we, uh, we watched a podcast that was jeff Dahl, right jeff yeah, yeah yeah so he so he what did he's what did he know what yeah, he what, snitched what he on like, really, listen you i i know what he did you know, yeah. but it just you're a you're a, you're a, you're a hard on. Yeah. You know, you're a punk, and everybody's like, "Yo, yeah, no, I know, I know, I know." See the paperwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's in the paperwork. Pay for so what happened was, it's, it's funny because like two weeks ago, I was on a, uh, a video chat with like Dave McIsaac, uh, Drew Amatroli, a few other guys. Yeah. And they were like, because Dave can't stand Jeff Dahl either. He's like, yo, let's FaceTime him. One of them had the number. He got on. And then he must have been like at, at a church social with his kids or some shit. I'm going, you rat cock. And he's like, he's just looking. And like, they cut me off. They were like, yo, we just the music and stuff like that. And every change you get, you're, you're... <laughs> Can you get rid of that can? It smells like fucking ass. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Who, what is, what is this? It's just straight aluminum foil. What is this? So I, where are these guys out of? Jersey. 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 Yeah. So they're using Jersey fucking water. Yeah. <laughs> out of the fucking the, Hudson. The, sw the swamps of fucking Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to talk about the atmosphere, I know you guys were um, like you guys. Everybody seemed to be very uh, aggressive and like you know everybody was tough and everybody wanted because I feel like that's what brought the crowd in. Like a lot of people didn't even watch hockey; they were just very like. They no, we had two advertisements. Ones where we would put it was a team photo and it would put family fun, and then in the <laughs> bars around Danbury and all like they would put you know, welcome to hell, <laughs> you know, listen. <laughs> and like uh, you know, they, the evil empire, the the the, the Darth Vader music, it was cool. and you know because so you know yeah, that's uh, cool, dude. You know, like I said, when, it, it's I see. Jimmy, I, when you know Jimmy had that has that aura, you know. Yeah, yeah. even though you know brought uh, that to the yeah, because I, I I was never really into hockey. I went I I actually started getting into hockey because of the documentary. So I went to my first hockey game. I went to the New Jersey Devils. I seen the New Jersey Devil game, and I was expecting to see fights. I was expecting to see. It's not. It's not the same. Not like, like that. Yeah, it's not, not like that. that. It still happened a little bit though. Because they they had like how many penalties did you guys have that year? I know you guys got like seventeen players suspended yeah. that year. Listen, it, you know we did have like uh, people. We had suspended. people that would work game night in the locker room, and they would be you know here are the, the, you know. They come in and they would. I didn't even know they were they were working with us. They would sell themselves that they can work game night, and the request that we would have because each guy that fights has a certain way he wants his jersey sewn, he wants his jersey cut, you know, or he wants the Crisco on this shoulder. I, gonna, I okay. was going to, you know, and here it was as I was like, you know, fuck, am I, you know, uh, this is why they called me because all those tricks I learned from my, you know, my father and whoever else was involved with the game. And you know it was it was really like it was this was old time hockey you know, again we AJ you know and, and Jimmy and I we wanted to create what the Flyers had done in the seventies which was control chaos you know yeah yeah um, in the documentary uh, they uh, Brad said that you handed him a phone with Jimmy on it did yeah. you know what Jimmy was gonna tell him to do to just drop his yeah. gloves as soon yeah. as it started yeah. <laughs> was every was everyone like required that if 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 they Jimmy gave the go, you had to do it? Well, it wasn't so much Jimmy giving the go. It was either Jimmy or AJ. Or it was you know like on game day we would be sitting in Jimmy's office and just like you know eating McDonald's and talking shit. You know who are we fucking up tonight? You know, <laughs> but you know, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, you know, as much as like with Winger, uh, you know, we become really good buds, and uh, his him, his wife and his and his sons, they're, they're great people. But uh, you know, the the night that his leg got swept yeah. and kicked out from underneath, yeah, yeah. Like, we're gonna talk uh, about you know, I mean, I just couldn't believe that. You know, within uh, within hours, it was it was like, yo, what part of Michigan is he from? Yeah, no, we yeah. we we saw that in the documentary. They said that 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 Jimmy put him in a car. Drove him past his house, and I was like, what do you want to do about it? Well, so supposedly, or allegedly, we had uh, people flown out to Michigan and uh, found his house and drove by and sat out there. That's how serious it was. Yeah. And this is this is alleged. You know, this, 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 there's things that went on that I really, there's some things I didn't know, and there's some things that they don't know that I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it was just like, okay, when it came back around, Oh, yeah. Once it hits us, then we'll find out. You know who do, you know, who's responsible for the, you know, the hotel. <laughs> you know? Waking up at the hotel and setting the alarm up at three in the morning. <laughs> that's, 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 that's fucking hilarious. That is, <laughs> <laughs> you said you you were in the hotel room. I was in the hotel room, 
and uh, I had gotten a call from the guy in the rink, you know, the, you know, the overnight guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, they just came in and put their equipment in. So they would put their equipment in, and a lot of times I'd be in like a little strip club, and I would get the call that they arrived, and they would go to the hotel, and I would go in and I would check the curves on their stick, or you know, I would cut yeah. different things, and then you know, the time with AJ and I put the fish, you know, shit like that. <laughs> but uh, that time, uh, yeah, he called me, he says because we had a host hotel, so I was in the room, you know, just watching porn eating pizza you know <laughs> it's friday night yeah yeah, yeah. and then the, just about 4 30 i'm like i pulled that fucking alarm and that was it that was it <laughs> they ever say anything about it to you yeah you ever got caught doing something like that because the fucking mayor was in on it um i wanted to ask like as far as the fights and things like that i know like some brawls like went out were you involved in any of those like did you get out of onto the ice um not really with danbury when i was uh in the southern league uh you know uh that was where like we were walking on you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know nice and short yeah yeah. How's your relationship with um, Richard? Uh, uh, Michelle? Yeah, Michelle. I, I think Richard is, uh, he's the uh, salt of the earth all outside of hockey. <laughs> you know, instead of hockey, he felt he had to do a job and walk around with his chest out. But again. <laughs> yeah, no, there's dealing no. with different type of people. There was a point in the documentary where he said it was a uh, minnow swimming with the sharks. I love that analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, like I said, he, he, you know, when he came in, you know, and, and sat with uh, me, Jimmy, and AJ, and he, you know, was sitting there and he was, and AJ had said, listen, this is what we're going to do. And he was like, you yeah, know, I'll show you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot to learn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> did he, did he ever... You're not in Kansas anymore, boo-boo. Did he... <laughs> You're staying in Wichita. <laughs> did he ever um, threaten your job, though? Did, was he ever like, hey, you're going to be out of here? Yeah. And then I, I had talked to him, and I told him, I said, listen, next time you come here, we're going to fucking dance. He turned around and called Jimmy. You know, he, <laughs> he, like, yo, deal with it yourself. You know, you, you want to be the fucking commissioner. You know, yeah. and you want to, you know, be stupid and like, yeah. and I would say to him, God, I'm the equipment manager. You got more people to worry about. He goes, who the <laughs> no. fuck are you kidding? You're not the equipment manager. <laughs> he said the, the, the worst problem we had was, was the whole league. Not about, but then he called emergency meeting. Why would you call an emergency meeting with the fucking equipment manager involved? <laughs> yeah, the vendetta, dude. Yo, 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 you have yeah. a, you have a ball. You were telling, you were. I'm pretty sure they were telling you certain things that you had to do. Like, I'm pretty sure it wasn't just you going in there and ringing the alarm at 3 a.m. I'm pretty sure they were like giving you instructions, I, I, right? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> that it was you. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what it was. You know, they just did. They blame it on my my learning disability. They couldn't <laughs> fucking. They couldn't. Lazy eye. <laughs> I, 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 no, he's he's fucked up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But you know, a funny story about that is that uh, my brother and I, when we had moved up here just before my mother had passed away, she had convinced, because camp was really expensive, and she could not handle us for the summer. So what she did was, <laughs> she went to the school, she heard about this program that they ran out of the school during the summer, and it was for, this is before they discovered, like, you know, autism, so yeah. she convinced the school Wait, that we needed to Before they discovered autism? Well, well, meaning that it wasn't big when I was a kid. Yeah, oh, yeah. Did I just turn this off? No, no, you're good. But, but what it was is that they turned around, she turned around and she convinced them that we needed to be in this special needs camp, my brother and I. Swear to God, and we went there for fucking six weeks, and at the end of each Friday, they would have field day, mm -hmm. and we were competing against guys like in wheelchairs and walkers and shit like that, my brother. <laughs> so it worked on you mentally. We'd come home off the fucking camp bus with all kinds of ribbons and stuff, and like, you know, we were beating retarded guys in foot races and shit like that. And, you know, and it's like, it was a dollar a day. My mother wasn't able to afford it. But, you know, and it's just, and pe people say, no way you can make that shit up. It was, you know, we'd be on the bus with guys that shit their pants. You know, it was a fucking, in the middle of the summer. <laughs> Did you guys have to, like, act? Uh, no, no, you know, you know. Well, you know what it was? I still had the bad eye, you know, and my brother, you know. <laughs> so, and she, she sold, my mother sold it. You know, listen, he's fucked up. He's even more fucked up. So I, I wanna I wanna circle back a little bit. You know, we're talking about Brad, you know, when, when he fucked up his leg and all that shit happened. Uh, in the in the arena, you know, a lot of shit was going on. I know, you know, Jimmy ended up punching a referee. I, I kinda wanna hear that story from, you know, your perspective and how you saw it and everything that was going down. I was I was in the ambulance with Brad. I went to the hospital. Yeah. yeah, but I, I heard 
I was listening to the game on the radio in the fucking emergency room. That, yo, this is how big that team was. They had the game yeah. playing on the fucking radio in the in, in the yeah. OR, you know, and he was going into OR. And they were like, they called, they, they, yo, they, we got one of the trashes here. And they, they fucking ran because Jimmy put a wing on that hospital. You know, they were fucking. Yeah, they put were, a wing in the hospital? Yeah, he built a wing on that hospital. They they went, when, when Winger went in, we kind of had that ambulance. There was... Uh, it looked like the Kennedy assassination when he went into that fucking hospital in Dallas. That's how many people were there. Yeah. Yeah. Flooding around. I know. Uh, he did a lot of shit for the community. He did. He built shit for the school. He, he said yeah, no, he made, he, you know, even, you know, even uh, uh, the 9 11 Foundation, the roof on the church. You yeah. know, he, he does have a big heart. You know, there's times that, you know, he, he's helped me out. When I when I was uh, putting together the business that I told you that my family got involved with, yeah. it was the same. You know, it was the same thing. You know, it was so fucking stressful. You know, yeah. and you know to to run out of to, to funds when you think that it's going to be a certain amount. You know, when you got you know some scumbags fucking lying to you about how much it should be. You know, on top. Of yeah, other. yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what type of business it was? It It was a restaurant. Oh, okay. yeah, it was a restaurant. Yeah, Tally? Uh, yeah, but uh, I would say yeah. Dirty Italians. <laughs> what is, what's the definition what of that? Yeah, elaborate a little bit. What's that? <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's, 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 that's the waiters? <laughs> well, they can all go fuck themselves. You know, whoever was involved, they should, you know, their, their mother should die of a miserable death on Christmas morning underneath the Christmas tree. Jesus Christ. <laughs> underneath the or Christmas tree. Or, yeah, or better yet, in church on Sunday morning on Easter. So. The holiest day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I wanted to start, uh, talk about like the Nigerian nightmare they call. Fucking love him. <laughs> Rooms and I, we go way back to when he was, he had, he was with the uh, Buffalo Saber organization, yeah. and he came out of Rochester, their affiliate into Hartford, and him and I just hit it off because I was with the uh, Wolfpack at that time, mm -hmm. and it was really, uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, awesome. uh, just yes. a great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Listen, you know, it's it's black and white with me, you know, you know, you know, we had a few, you know, a few guys that were, you know, my my favorite on the team, but uh, it is what it is, you know. Listen, he not only a former NHL player, but you know, he was a good locker room guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could have guys on the team that are just okay players, but they hold that nucleus together. It's a team, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a team. They, they what was the team. atmosphere like in that locker room? Because I know, like, it was because like, you had you, you had all high profile guys. You know, it yeah. was you know, and then then you had the guys who just they they were taking up space, and you know, these guys would we go into buildings and and like other teams would just watch us play. They'd stand there and watch you play. It was like you know, watching you know like with somebody's uh, um, like when Florida State plays the Citadel, you know. You get caught standing around watching them because they're fucking they're so good, you know. And then you would get a team come in and, and to Danbury, and uh, you only see fourteen, fifteen guys in the ice. You're like, what the fuck's going on here? And they get off the bus, and all of a sudden they would get. It was called the Danbury flu. They didn't want to get their, they didn't want to get their ass handed um, to them during during the NHL NHL lockout. Uh, you guys were able to get uh, Michael Rupp, and how was that? Like the kind of that was the, yeah, the you know I. That's it. That's it was, yeah, yeah. He okay. came in. Actually, he came in with his uh, a, uh, his Stanley Cup ring on. But uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, that was it. that was all AJ. AJ. AJ negotiated that and was able to pull that off. You know, because when the year that he scored that goal, actually, I was with the Galante family in the, uh, the Meadowlands Arena, sitting in the seats when they won the Stanley Cup. Oh, you were there too. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, because AJ, they show a clip and AJ's there. And yep, I was there. there. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that was there. Other than um, other than Dahl, was there anybody else on the team that you just couldn't stand? Like, oh. uh Scott Sterling, the goaltender, <laughs> uh, the coach's brother. Yeah, we really didn't do like we, we didn't learn anything about the goaltender to be honest. Which yeah. is not well, well, well you, you notice how they kept uh, the Sterling brothers, the coach, out of there. Out yeah, of, yeah. Out of, that's yeah. another thing. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, he took some hit for that shit. He had no fucking clue what he was getting involved with. <laughs> and, you know, we're, and you know they just they just you know they. He, that poor fucking kid, you know, you know, man, you know, you know, Boston Mass, you know, the whole fucking, you know, uh, Harvard Yard shit, and he got fucking, he got fucked over, you know, but uh, he, he, uh, he was a good guy, you know, but yeah. his brother, uh, uh, Scott, um, yeah, you know. They were definitely in a little too deep. Yeah, yeah, they were in over the head. Over the head, yeah. Yeah, right yeah they was were he, Was he good? Was he good, though? He wasn't a bad goaltender. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, you know, again, 
Scott was in over his head. Uh, Todd, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, d- he didn't know that it was going to be as, like... Had not a clue. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was regular minor league hockey team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you would have to tell some of these guys, it was just like, every weekend after your homestand, you were like, just, you can't go anywhere because you know the phone was going to ring, you know? And it, it was like, Monday morning, this was the speech. Stay off the weed. <laughs> the Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> exactly. Stay off the weed. Stay off the bar in the strip club. You know, so it was like more like, you know, here it was that like you, you bring all these fucking animals in and these half of them are convicts. And then you set them loose in the streets of Danbury. It was just like, hey, you know. Now, now, now with Tommy Papa Silva running around all oh, hey, these strip clubs. You know, and then next thing you know, they start venturing a little bit. Yeah. You know, so we find some of them in Manhattan. And then next thing you know, I got them in the car with me. They're in the Bronx with me. They're coming into fucking places with me. And guys are going, oh, these fucking Canadian motherfuckers. <laughs> and then, you know, then these guys are thinking they're fucking racket guys. that come back. You know, I was like, hey, come here, kid. <laughs> Yeah, oh fuck it. So who was who was giving those speeches? Who was coming into the who was coming into the locker room giving those speeches? Did Jimmy Coach. come in there? Uh, well, Sterling was giving the yeah. "Stay off the weed" <laughs> speeches, and you know Jimmy was giving the speeches. Of, you know, Kill. when when are you going to be fucking buried? You know, <laughs> we had a guy. We had a guy come in. We had a guy come in. And it was after the first practice, big fucking kid. Mm-hmm. And he came off the ice, and I said to him, uh, I'm standing there, I says, uh, you know, are you going to need anything special as far as equipment or jersey? He goes, no, why? I says, well, a lot of the fighters I take care of. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't fight. I said, what do you say? <laughs> he says, I don't fight. I went, okay, and he's walking, and he was wa- walking back towards the locker room. And uh, I think it was Bobby Stearns was standing there, one of the assistant coaches. I said, dead man walking. He goes, <laughs> you think? 20 minutes later, his shit was in a garbage bag outside the arena. Jimmy, I told Jimmy, he goes, put his shit in the garbage bag, put it outside the fucking arena. <laughs> <Not welcome back. laughs> yeah, that shit was in a fucking hefty two ply. <laughs> What was the uh, what do you think was the difference maker? Because obviously you guys had a better second year than you guys had the first year. Yeah, I was more in the background the second year. Yeah, because, uh, you know. You had your problem with, you know, Bruce or whatever. Yeah, I had a lot of, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Were you like, still on payroll, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Fuck. So you, you fucking crazy? You know, you know what it was? <laughs> you know, fucking mind? Yeah, you got to be on, you got to be able to make that kind of money. If you keep getting in trouble, afford those, you know, the fucking lawyer fees. You know, because, <laughs> you know, like I said, you know, I had a really good run uh, a few years after Danbury where, Life was just, yeah. and then that bullshit, and then you know I was like, you know, uh, friends, all use the same lawyer. <laughs> Got the same lawyer. <laughs> the same lawyer. And then when I was like, you know, because I, I know him, and he's, and he's like, yeah, this is my price. I was like, what? <laughs> is he good though? Yo, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be. Gotta yeah, be. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, he's got. Listen, and you know, it, I'm glad I'm able to look out because it was like. Fuck, how many times can you get arrested in two weeks? <laughs> and I didn't give a fuck, and everybody was trying to find me. And I just kept looking for them, and my family was looking for me to come in. Oh, so you was constantly just like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Looking for them. Yeah, yeah. Like, because at the first two or three times, state police would just book me and then let me go. Yeah. yeah. And I'd be like, going back again. <laughs> so they, they, they gave me, you know, uh, his, I had like seven court order protections, uh, and I'm like, Oh, fuck out of here! I, fuck out of these I didn't give a fuck. You fucked. You fucked us. Yeah, yeah. You know. And then, uh, so this happened in two different counties. Mm-hmm. So, so this, this well, yeah, the one county had me, and the Westchester County was waiting for me outside the jail. So <laughs> these fucking guys. So now my son's standing there, and he, as soon as I come out, then my paper, he hands me a cigar. And I lit it, and he's going over because this is like we're running out of money. We started how to go to bail bondsmen. So, yeah. so I'm smoking a cigar, and they're walking towards me, and they're like, put the cigar on. And, and they're like, and Putnam's telling him, let him sign his 
papers and this and that. Yeah. So I would sign a shit like this. T and then take a direct. And then they're waiting to take me down to county, right? <laughs> so, the post that they do. so what they did was they said, all right, this is the last time. What we're going to do is we're going to put an ankle bracelet on you. If you go anywhere near any of these people's homes or businesses, you're fucking done. So now, I'm during the pandemic with this thing on. It's supposed to come off. You can't get it off. Yeah. The courts are so closed up. Everything's you know yeah. bad. So they, f I finally we get a court date this and that. And my lawyer works his magic and says, get it off. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I go and I meet. I meet. I go to the probation office and they come out in the parking lot and do it. Uh -huh. Do you know that I almost have 750 hits on TikTok? I filmed it while they were taking it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's on TikTok, so they take, you know they they take it off. You know it was uh, it was it was you know you got to laugh about it at that time though. <laughs> so uh, another funny story during that time, uh, I finally learned that yeah, you know different. I wasn't answering calls and I was blocking whenever they, we, the police would call and say, listen, we got to come in. We just got another complaint or whatever. So the lawyer calls me and he says, special court hearing Thursday morning. I said, oh, what? Yeah. He goes, yeah. So my son and I, it was, he's 22. Is he like you? Oh, great. We made him a best friend, but. <laughs> Yeah, so we're we we're, we're shitting, giggling, and shit. Yo, we're going, we're gonna go, to, we're gonna go to IHOP after court. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so we walk in there, and it's you know the judge and about ten fucking cops. My lawyer's there. He goes up and he and he's talking to the to the, to the district attorney. And we're in my me and him in the back laughing. Yo, I'm gonna get the grand slam, my man. He come back to he says, Yo, they want to put you in jail for fucking a year and a half until the court of I went. No grand slam for you. <laughs> I says, wait. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> my asshole got real tight. <laughs> I get real <laughs> knees. <laughs> I said, and he, my, Cody was like, yo, I'm going to I hop in the way, you know? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so now they say, okay. That's when they said, you know, the ankle bracelet, you know, half a million dollar bail, this and that, and all that kind of, yeah, yo, yeah, they were, Jesus Christ. Right, yeah, because the, cause the judge would say, you disobeyed me, this piece of paper, you disobeyed me personally. Yeah. Me personally. You said that. I said, yeah, I was like, who the fuck is you? <laughs> yo, yo, you're just, a, you're just a punk in a robe, you know what I mean? Get <laughs> the fuck out of here. In a robe is hilarious. <laughs> Did the arrest of Jimmy surprise you? Or you kind of knew that? No, I kind of knew, you know. But, like, did, did, did everyone actually know the extent of what the FBI was doing at the time? Like They, they, had, they had undercover agents. Yeah, they had them in the, in the stands. Right? They had them in the stands. They had them in the office working as a salesman. Oh, were you guys yeah. able to spot them in the stands? Or no, you guys just... Listen, like, I was more... I was so focused. I had to, I had to take care of 20-something different personalities. Yeah, so yeah. I really wasn't, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I had a, you know, a young kid, and I had to deal with fucking... They had you people know, on the lookout for that. Yeah, thing. you know, he had fucking had to deal with you know Jimmy's fucking you know craziness and, and, and you know all kinds you know, oh, yeah. and uh, you know. So you were you weren't really focused on any of that stuff. So no. but but did you know like it was it was happening? Like did you know that the FBI was closing in? They were building a case and all that other stuff on Jimmy. When you know after it happened, I look back on different situations and and different things that had happened, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, that guy was a fed. Yeah, like, that guy was a fed. You <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you yeah, know, uh, you know, and it's like so stupid. Like, you know, when I come out one morning and this guy was like, yo, you see my dog? I'm like, didn't tell anything about it. Then I realized afterwards, this guy was a fucking agent who coming around my house. Jesus. You know? So, th so they, did they ever come up to you personally as like an FBI agent? Like, oh yeah, yeah. They, they dragged me out of the house and they told me, uh, listen, either you, uh, you do X, Y, Z or you're going to jail, jail for tax evasion. Tax? There's yeah, yeah they had me on my tax. I, I said, I swear I did. I, I you know, they, they they had right there. I did. I did the Allen Iverson. Talking about taxes. <laughs> Are we talking about taxes? I kept doing. We talking about taxes, and they were like, "Yo, you can't be the funny guy now." I says, "Are we talking about taxes?" I says, "How much?" And they handed a piece of paper, and the fucking paper said thirty-two thousand dollars. And I was like, oh, "Fuck, you know, uh, you know, I'm, he's, you know, Jimmy's giving me fucking three grand a week. Oh, yeah, yeah, I gotta figure it out." So I winded up, uh, 
you know, I came up with the money, so they couldn't do anything. Oh, good. You, know, you ended up just paying the thirty-two. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was after you know because back in my playing days, I had a little bit nice signing bonus, and you know, fuck, I ain't gonna pay tax. Ooh, taxes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my taxes are real good right now. <laughs> real good. <laughs>
I decided to, after two weeks of just dodging Dodge film crews. I mean, this shit yeah. was on NBC News. I mean, it was everywhere. I saw, I saw yeah, I saw it. Yeah. So I decided to, uh, uh, somebody, a very wise person who I, you know, to this day, you know, uh, former Senator uh, Terrence Murphy told me, uh, dress it head on. Bet yeah. you are going to learn from it. Lo and behold, here we are, what, two years later, and the amount of uh, love and support that the community has showed me, uh, you know, continuing with my charitable work and uh, attending workshops, working with the uh, the uh, Northern Westchester Putnam uh, Race Amenity Program, I've really learned a lot about myself uh, and a lot about my community. And uh, if I said it on a street corner, nobody would have thought twice. It was on camera, right? It, it, was, camera. it was on camera, but... Who had the camera? Like who was somebody Facebook Live? Okay, and they were filming behind us. It's a wicked world. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I took the time to learn. I took the time to take classes, workshops, uh, speaking engagements. The race amenity program of uh, Northern Western Department. They had me go around speaking with for them, because a lot of people go in and, and they'll speak to uh, uh, an audience and they'll say, "I was racially profiled." This would have me. I'm talking from somebody who said it. Yeah, but yeah. anybody who knows me knows that I'm I'm not a racist. Yeah. You can't, listen, there's ten percent on each side you can't make happy. But with that being said, you know, uh some people there's more loyalty on the street than there is with politicians. Mm -hmm. Some of these people are have, have run on part of their campaign about look what I did to T Bone. I shut him down. One out of they ran on that because, you know, they look like a you know, you know, you, you gotta remember. The root to all evil in this world is jealousy. People jealous of who I am, what I drive, how I carry myself. Uh, the, the San Gennaro Festival I run, mm -hmm. the restaurant I was going to open, Scar Lounge, whatever. People are jealous. They're going to they're going to come at you, and you know you have to realize that. And I kind of like in the beginning was really bitter towards that and uh, bitter towards people taking advantage of what I said. But then I've met the most amazing people, uh, one being, uh, you know, Dask Armstrong, who is a political leader in my eyes from the community of Yorktown. He's an uh, African-American guy. And then Judith Stevens and uh, Susan Cody. I mean, I've met so many people along my journey. My journey, I never really thought that I would enjoy it as much as I have and learned. Yeah. But again, as long as, uh, you know, everybody around me stays off the weed. <laughs> have, you, have you ever got a chance to talk to Patel again? Uh, no, the, the, the cocksucker won't accept my apology. He, he won't, won't even talk to you? won't even talk to me. No, and I'm going to tell you something. You know what? And then, you, you know, in the beginning, everybody's like, you know, I went, I went on the defense. I was like, well, you know, he tried to hit somebody with a mallet at a, at a board meeting. You know, and he's had these outbursts. Yeah. And then. But it doesn't make it. I gotta worry about me. I can't worry about yeah. him. What I said hurt my community. Yeah. What and whoever filmed it, I really don't believe. But I think they might have hurt. Said, listen, I got T Bone doing something, yeah, and yeah. he's getting too fucking powerful in town, yeah. and he's affecting my pocket. So I'm gonna shut him down by doing this. But you know what you did? You awoke another part of me. Another part of a journey in my life that has shown me. How to how to accept and how to learn and how to deal with different uh, different things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm a much better person than I was two years ago. That's what and, it's about, you know. It's about and that's growth. what it, that's what it's about. That's what it's about growth. Now, Tibo, I don't want to cut you off. We are starting to run low on time. Sure. Now, before before we end off, I have one more question. What so? What's your goals and aspirations now? What's your political goals? Kind of where where do you see yourself in five, ten, fifteen years? I'm definitely gonna you know uh, continue to. Uh, be uh, a community activist mm -hmm. uh, as far as, uh, you know, raising money and, uh, you know, helping different yeah. candidates that I get behind. Just because you're a Democrat doesn't mean I'm not going to get behind you or, you know, if you're a Republican, you know, that's my thing, yeah. you know, uh, continue, you know, I'm, you know, building up the car shows that I work and, and run. Um, uh, you know, would I like to get back into hockey in a certain aspects? Sure. But again, I think my greatest ability is to dream as a young man. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you if you dream as a young man or a young yeah. person, you'll always have something. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this time's through the pandemic on my father on the ventilator for nine weeks and this and that and the court and being arrested and this, where you really like, you know, I question myself mm -hmm. as far as like, 
uh, you know, when you ask something, they'll say, you know, he'll, the higher power will only give you so much you can handle. Yeah. So how much do you want to give me, you know? I mean, I, you know, I've been, you know, I've been dead in the streets a few times, but, you know, I've always come back because of uh, who I am and, you know, what I want to prove to myself in the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd like to see myself more of a, you know, again, being more uh, uh, active in the community yeah. and, and shoving up some people's asses. I love that. We would love to do this again. Sure. Yeah, and, and I will, I'll, I'll make sure I get a great cut next time. Absolutely. <laughs> Colin, I really appreciate it, brother. All fucking good, you know what I mean? Watch your pocketbooks. Watch your pocketbooks. Yeah. 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 Yo, that was some funny <laughs> shit, bro. This is Higher Places. Motherfuckers.